County Lone Depot Park. We've got open air baseball for you on the show. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Miami Marlins. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. All right, first pitch coming up. And today's starter, Jesus Lazardo. Try to stay back for that power changeup. Speed differential between the fastball and the changeup is huge. Hitters, they have a hard time staying back. Okay, all set to go at the plate for Pittsburgh. O'Neill Cruz. And a pitch. Hard on the ground to first. He'll do it himself. And a quick out number one. There's a Pirates lineup now. And the key to victory for them here, get their starter some run support early. Boog, if they can get him that run support early, it's likely the other team folds because they know how dominant he can be once he gets settled in. So put pressure on that other team right away. Jump out to a lead early, and a few runs is going to feel like 30. That one foul down ball. the line, and it goes just foul. One out, base is empty. Late that time, and it's strike two. Threw that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. Swing and a miss, struck him out, and two away now. Well, that pitch wasn't even close to being a strike, and that just goes to show you how defensive hitters can become when they're up against an 0-2 count. You're just hoping for a mistake somewhere near the zone that you can get the bat to, but right there, he was clearly anxious. He was swinging when the ball left the hand. Here's Andrew McCutcheon to hit. And there's a strike. Good heater at 98. McCutcheon hitting third in the lineup. Can't forget to mention he's a former MVP. It's softly on the ground, left side. Tosses the first, and the Pirates go one, two, three. Bucks go down quietly. Now the Marlins will see what they can do. No score. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. Back here at Lone Depot Park. And today's starter, Mitch Keller. What should we keep an eye on here? Well, this guy featuring that straight forcing fastball, but off of it throws the cutter, and really he's most effective when he's using that cutter off the forcing fastball just to miss the barrel of the bat. Not always going to see the swings and misses, but if you can somehow get weaker contact, you have a chance to collect some outs. Now, it's going to look the same until the very last second, so hitters are going to have to make a decision and hope that sometimes they're able to guess right. Next offering upstairs. Into center. Sawinski drifts towards it, and there's one away. And time now for the Marlins lineup. Here's Tim Anderson. And a foul ball. Keller measures six feet two inches. He features a four seam fastball, a cutter, a sinker, a slurb, and he occasionally uses a curve. One down, base is empty. Foul ball there. 0 oh 2 now. Stays alive. And the right hander deals. Foul ball still 0 and 2. Kicks and fires. And now 1 and 2. 
just missing off the plate there according to the umpire and out there on the mound maybe trying to get an explanation can't say he's convinced but it looks like he's accepted it. down looking Josh Bell at the plate now strike on the inside corner two out spaces empty The 0 2. That one to first to Les. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. And 1 2 3 go the Marlins. We played an inning, no score. Back here in Miami, all set for the start of the inning. Here's the center fielder, Jack Sawinski. Lazardo back to work and immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. He's been known to jump all over the first pitch, so that seems like a missed opportunity right there. Gets the slider in there for a strike. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, the catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Swing and a miss struck him out. Pretty much textbook pitching for the three-pitch K right there. Jumped ahead 0-2 on two pitches. He didn't want to go after at the plate. Then, knowing he's going to be a little more aggressive, trying to protect, he expands just out of the zone where he couldn't do anything with it. He gets the strikeout and keeps the pitches thrown to a minimum. Very nice. Now batting key Brian Hayes. First offering, and it just misses. One down, base is empty. On the ground to third. Zips it to first. And that quickly, two away. Henry Davis will hit next. This lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing them down. He's settling in. You've got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. So two balls and no strikes. Two down, nobody on. Here at the top of the second. This is off the inside, and that's ball three. Oh, he never moved because he never had time to. With that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. 3-1, oh, oh. and he couldn't come up with it. Well, two out walks are never good, especially when you're trying to get back into that dugout. But he's still in a good spot. He's just got to refocus and deal with the bottom of this order. And now it's Rowdy Telez. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. Two outs. And that's outside. And the count one even one, one and three. one. No, he's really working him away this at bat. Sometimes take a little bit off velocity. Try to get a rollover, something on the ground. Stay away from that big hole on the right side of the infield. Left hand hitter waits. On the ground. Oh, what a stop. From his backside. Pretty nice play there. This guy's anticipation is off the charts. Don't see many shortstops better than that. Great job to complete the play and end the inning.
And welcome back to the ballpark. Bottom of the inning. And now for the Marlins, Jake Berger. The right-hander back to work. And that skips into dirt. Now a screamer into the outfield. That's down. One hops off the wall. Throws to second. And that's a leadoff double. All over that one right there. He got a pitch he could get to out front, kept his bat through the ball, and didn't pull off or roll his hands over. And that allowed him to rip that ball down the line for the double. Now let's see if they can put up the first run of the game. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. And that's outside. Man at second. Fought off foul. Pretty good pitch to take a pass at in a 1 0 count. Just not able to square it up. And he deals. Fouled off. He was late. And the righty deals. The other way. Makes the grab. One down. He put a really good swing on that pitch and hit the ball hard. You know, line drives won't always find a hole, but the more you can hit the ball like that with good exit velo, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. And that is in for a strike. It's 0-1. Ball one there. Matthew Ross behind the plate. Pitcher's umpire. Yeah, pitchers that work side to side effectively love being on the mound with Ross calling balls and strikes, but if you can command your stuff on the outer edges of the strike zone, he will reward you. Go ahead, run at second. Bottom half of inning number two. Got him looking, and he didn't like the call. Most guys are very aggressive when they see the stakes out there on the base paths and can't understand why he wasn't ready to swing the bat. You've got to be ready to swing the bat in a situation like that with the go-ahead run in scoring position. And at the plate for Miami, Jesus Sanchez. Ripped to third, but handled, and that'll end the inning. One left for Miami. We'll move to the third with no score. And we're back. Top half of the third inning. And now the right fielder, Edward Olivares. Edward Olivares. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. In for a strike. And it's 0-1. And right through there for a strike. All right, now, he may have not liked either of those first two pitches or agreed with the umpire's calls. But at this point, he's going to have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone. That one not close, and it's one and two. And another ball. He's trying to stay down in the zone, but the hitter just will not chase. Now back in a 2-2 count, he's going to have to go to something else to get him out. A wind in the pitch. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically, he likes to shoot the ball the other way. But that time, a little anxious. So up next, Leover Piguero. First pitch, not close. Wouldn't chase that time. Okay. 
That one off the mark. And that's ball yeah. three. Well, I would expect in this 3-0 count, you're taking all the way. See if they'll walk you. And there's the automatic. Base is empty one away. We're here in the top half of inning number three. And that's ball four. Well, that's a really dangerous base runner to put on first, especially in a tie game. Now there might be some consequences coming from that mistake. Here's O'Neill Cruz. He's 0 for 1. That one finds the zone. 0 for 1. This is one of those situations the infielders have to pre-plan and understand that the ball's got to be hit extremely hard right at them if they're going to have a chance to go for a double play. Man at first, one away. Swing and a pop-up. Foul territory for the catcher. And there's two down. Brian Reynolds here. Struck out swinging his first time. Now snap throw to first. Aguero dives back in safely. Swing and a miss, and he got him to chase. Then he really sells the changeup with that arm action. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. Brings it in, and that is that. So one left for Pittsburgh, and we are still scoreless. Back here with my pal Ziggy, set for the bottom of the third. Abisail Garcia up to the plate. Now the right-hander ready to go. Still no score. On the ground to third, and that squirts through. Around first and hustling for second. And he'll pull into second safely. Turned on it nicely. Definitely a little out in front of the pitch, but he didn't hook around it too much and was able to keep it fair down the line. Now a good opportunity to potentially jump ahead in this game here in the later innings. Next to hit, Nick Fortes. Close one, doesn't get the call. Ball one. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit's probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. Right-hander kicks, deals. Swings and misses. And a count one and one. Inside just missed. You don't want to get beat by a fastball in. And he spits on that one. Swing and this one's bounced to the ground. Throw over to Telez. One gone, bottom of the third inning. Not a bad outcome in that spot. The runner moves up to third, and now they have a chance to drive in the go-ahead run. It's not a knock, but at the end of the day, it's a good at bat. Luis Arise stands in. Breaking ball through there for a strike. Next pitch is outside. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. And now two and one. That one pulled foul. And another ball. With the go-ahead run at third, here in the last half of the third. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again.
Line drive. And that's a fair ball. And now it gets into the corner. Here comes the throw. He pulls into second as a run scores on the play. Well, there you go. The RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring it back. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. Here's the shortstop at the play. Tim Anderson caught looking his first time up. That's in there. Strike one. No ball. One strike. And the pitch. Right through there for a strike. Swings and misses. That's the second out. It's a good breaking ball there, just off the corner where you can't really do much damage, but it's close enough to where you've got to protect, and he just couldn't find a way to fight it off. And now the switch hitting first baseman, Josh Bell. 0 for 1 so far. That one fouled off. Arise at second with two down. The one is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. And another ball. Two balls, one strike. There's the swing and a miss. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. Got him. Inning over, and it could have been worse. Marlins get a run on the RBI double. It's now 1-0. Back after this on the show. here in Low Depot Park. And now it's Andrew McCutcheon. The wind of the pitch. That one finds the zone. Oh, no. Looking to get the tying run on base. And a swing and a miss. One gone here. Now oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it. From your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. i got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Holding on to a one-run lead, top half of inning number four. Oh, and two now as he swings through it. Got him swinging. Well, that right there is just a pitcher's pitch, tailing away from the hitter, lowering away with some good action at the end. You know, even if he gets the bat to that ball, it's probably just a weak ground ball to the opposite side. Tell you what, that's a tremendous two-strike pitch. Key Brian Hayes, the next pirate to hit. First pitch, just misses. One and out. Swung on, popped up on the infield. Bell moving under it, nabs it, and that'll do it. Nothing doing here for Pittsburgh. 
They still trail 1-0. Ready to go, Lydia, bottom four. Here's the third baseman, the third Jake baseman. Berger. Not a surprise he's off to a good start in this one, given he enjoys playing so much at home. Let's see if he can make it two for two. The why to kick the pitch. And it's fouled away. Ooh. Strike two. This guy's got such a good sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. Outside. Riding to the plate. That misses. And the count's even at two. Good eye in that spot. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And a pitch. And he chases that one. Looks like he's picked up right where he left off. And up next for Miami, Jazz Chisholm Jr. He's 0 for 1. Wouldn't chase that time. One ball, no strike. And another ball. Base is empty, one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Next pitch is outside. He hasn't fallen behind in the count like this all day. He's in danger of walking his first batter right here. That just missed. He walked him on four pitches. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk, and the guy at the plate was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. One down. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. His first at bat was a strikeout. One and oh. Pitch out, but no action. And that one fouled off. Chisholm at first, one gone. foul ball at the belt and fires swings and misses on the fastball up in the zone for the strikeout toughest pitch to hit fastball on the outer black man sometimes you just got to tip your cap Now here is Jesus Sanchez. That immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Move to first. And he's out there. And they got him. That ends the inning. Welcome back to the ballpark. New inning getting started, and here's the catcher, Henry Davis. Lazardo back to work. And that one fouled off. The 0 1. Line drive. Man, that could have been a big swing in this game. Just unlucky at a really unfortunate time right there. Here's Rowdy Telez. Grounded out his first time. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate. Try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Bounding ball here. Rolls foul. Left-hand batter waits. Bounce to the right side. And the Pirates with only one out left. Couple of pitches and a quick out. Oh. 
Now it's the right fielder, Edward Olivares. He was a strikeout victim his first time. No, and that one just ball. missed off the outside edge. The pitch. Fought off foul. Well, this offense has just been locked down. Almost five full innings of shutout baseball. Now this is in the air down the line. And that's a foul ball. The Pirates down to their final strike. That one ripped left field. That's long gone. And this game is tied. It's 1-1. This game is breathing new life thanks to that home run, and that's exactly what they needed. Anytime you have a pitch down the middle of the plate, the percentages go up for the hitter to do damage, even if it's a pretty good sinker like that one. Nice piece of hitting there at the plate. Two outs, nobody on. Up next for the Pirates, Leover Peguero. Oh. Right down to shoot, and that is strike one. The line of the pitch. In the air, left side. Makes the catch, and that'll do it. But Pittsburgh gets even on the solo homer. All even now at 1 1. It's Major League Baseball on the show. And we're back. Lead and now, Jesus Portland. Sanchez. The right fielder. The pitch. Oh. And ball one to the right fielder. Okay. And that's outside. Ball two. And another ball. Masayu Garcia waits on deck. In for a strike, now three and one. Clearly taking all the way there in that 3-0 count. It was a cookie right down the middle. Ground ball scooped up Key Brian Hayes. Whips it across. And the leadoff man set down in their half of the fifth. If you want to be a great defense, you have to deliver consistently. It doesn't matter how many highlight reel plays you make if you can't execute the small stuff just like we saw. And now, Avasail Garcia. And ball one. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball two. All tied up. Last half of inning number five. To third, Hayes. Garcia gone on the play. That's a huge defensive play in the late stages of the game. It might not be the most challenging we've seen today, but it needed to be made. That's helping your team. Nick Fortes digs in now. Grounded out his first time. And there's the strike. Line drive. Brings it in for the third out. Nothing doing for the Marlins. Score remains deadlocked at one.
Back here in Miami, top of the sixth inning. Now it's the shortstop, O'Neill Cruz. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. That one catches the corner for a strike. Well, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite the speed, ball. the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. And now the lefty. Next offering misses down and away. In the air, right field, Sanchez. As this one sized up, brings it in. Runner tags up for third, and he's in safely at third with one out. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Brian Reynolds. one finds the zone strike one not sure if he was expecting for the pitcher to come right at him but he got a nice cookie there and just watched it the entire way here comes a pitch gets him to chase after that one he's falling behind in a huge spot boo. got to do what it takes to come through maybe choke up on the bat a little bit spread out those feet whatever it ball. takes that one misses and the count one and two 0-2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. And a swing and a miss. Huge strikeout there. Chris third time through the order and a couple of quick outs for the starter. Yeah, he's been very frugal today. Economical with the pitch count. To the plate now for Pittsburgh is the DH. Andrew McCutcheon. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Two outs. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to... Right side, hard hit. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. Top of the order due up in the home half of the sixth. All tied 1-1. One, one. Back here with my pal Siggy. John Chappie with Chris Singleton in the booth. And leading off the bottom of the sixth, Luis Arias. pitch and that's in for a strike no ball. one strike swing and a drive deep right field that's back and it's caught just in front of the wall runner tags it second maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really number drive number it seven. shortstop Tim. and now for the Marlins Tim Anderson who's over two with a pair of strikeouts fly ball to the outfield for a sack fly soft ground ball to the right side find a hole he can attack this a few ways but the one thing that smacked on a line to center and yeah, they take care of Anderson for the out runner tags from third the winning run crosses the plate and the Marlins walk it off for the win well, you come to the ballpark hoping you'll see something special that day, whether you're a player or a fan. A walk-off win, nobody forgets that. A memorable moment that'll be logged in the backs of the minds of everybody that witnessed this here today. And your final score here today, 2-1. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chomby.
Thanks for joining us.